Hi guys, welcome to the next video. So this video is all about Rimmel. I wanted to do a video where you could get these products relatively cheaply, but the quality is really, really important too. Um, Rimmel is really, really popular in the UK and Kate Moss does a lot of um, advertising for Rimmel too. She, had a, she actually had a red lipstick dedicated to her and she created this red lipstick with um, Rimmel. So there's a lot of things I have today and um, I specifically wanted to get an eyeshadow palette because I wanted to see the colour range that you can get. There was a lot of different ones, there was a lot of neutrals, really bright ones, but this one was really, um, this one just kind of, you know, screamed at me a little bit because it's so neutral, so kind of plummy, peachy, then you've got your smoky eye and then you have this random blue. So this is the Magnifying Reloaded Edition and this was £3.39, so amazing. You also get a brush with an applicator side and a blender side, so that was really, really good. Um, I have, I think, shown you the Rimmel Fix and Perfect Prime Matte. I've only seen matte, um, I looked, I searched and searched for primers. If there is, comment below a different primer, but um, the, the primers are relatively um, predominantly matte. So, but when you put it on, it's a really thick, creamy consistency. It certainly didn't dry my skin out. And then I got the lasting finish, and this is the 35 hour wear, but it's hyaluronic acid and it's got 20% um, SPF. So I've got so many things. I have their concealer, which I've used for a while. I did plan on building all these products up. There was one mascara that apparently went viral last year, um, and it's the Wonder Volume Thrill Seeker. So we'll be looking at that as well. So let's start. I also got some brow, some brow, some brow. I always use the e.l.f. brow, brow, why? Brow, wow. Okay, sorry, I haven't had enough coffee today. Um, and this is their Brow Pro Micro Pencil, and you get the brush on one end and the pencil on the other. So we've got a lot, I've got like a neutral lipstick too, because I've got a lot of reds at the minute, and I wanted to kind of see what you could wear every day, but you also could kind of maybe put a liner with it and make it kind of jazz it up a bit, and this is what that looks like. There's a lovely kind of sweet scent from it, and this is in Airy Fairy. So we'll go through everything. I'm really excited. I got one of their maxi blushes too, um, and I think it was like three pounds as well. And this was all bought on Amazon, by the way, but I think Boots have an um, Superdrug have, well, my Superdrug in Kiddington, because I do predominantly go to Superdrug in Kiddington because I still work there, um, has, has got a section on Rimmel, but it's not, it hasn't got absolutely everything. So this is one of their maxi blushes. They do come in a lot deeper, um, but this is Wildcard 003. So we're gonna start and I'm excited because I have used the Fix and Perfect Primer for about two weeks now and it has like a moisturizing effect. So we're just gonna show you what that looks like and a little goes a very long way. I choose to kind of put it on with my fingers. Some people use a brush and I'm just looking at the mirror. Um, and I apologize for Saturday's video not going up. There'll be three videos, sorry, two today going up and then one on Wednesday. Um, I am getting, I put it down on my, see, I actually went thinking it was a moisturizer and put it down the neck. What was I doing? Okay, um, I wasn't very well at the weekend um, and working some of it and not very well on Saturday, but I will always make it up during the week. So that's that really soft consistency. Doesn't dry into your skin really, really quickly either. Um, and it's just really soft. It's pleasant to put on, you know, you like putting it on. I am going to use my sponge for this and this is the lasting finish. Mine is in ivory, um, or oh, porcelain, sorry. And that's what that looks like. Um, but all of these products guys are so, you know, bargain friendly, but I just want to say the quality because sometimes you'll get really good bargain um, kind of beauty products, creams, foundations, um, and the quality isn't exactly kind of great. And then you okay, okay, you have to kind of, realize okay so i did pay this so i can't really expect anything amazing but actually rimmel they're 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 just so so whatever they use in their products really works so and i think it was one of my first w7 and rimmel were actually one of my first years and years ago when i first started in makeup products i love the fact that it has a pump i even think the packaging has changed as well so i'm just going to put one pump there um and i'm going to spray my brush so we're going to be using for the buff foundation buffing brush and this is elf's foundation brushing foundation buffing brush um, and that's what that looks like it's really nice it, i've just washed it too and um, really really good and um, what do you guys use i used to get used to kind of get so head up with you know making sure that i have you know the best you know brush cleaner and as time went on and i kind of just got experienced with different things i use sometimes i use conditioners sometimes i'll use shampoos um, and it just really, they, they, you know, really, once you kind of really get washed and deep cleaned, I find that I actually don't need, so I'm not one of these kind of, so forgive me if you don't, but I'm, I tend to not 
go and use the most expensive things anymore and I get such a good quality I dry them naturally um, and I get such good quality results and it keeps the brushes really well particularly my real techniques I have so many real techniques brushes that I've kept that way um, and they've been great honestly if you guys use something else let me know in the comments so I'm going to just spray my brush quickly just with some dampen it quick so as I said, this is the last, there's two videos that are being recorded and they're the last ones with this background. Um, I wanted to be able to display, I've been looking a lot, looking at a lot of um, shop my stash videos and pan, what was the other one? There was a pan march, like, um, you know, use up pan, you know, they, um, and they all looked at their, basically when I was looking at them, their kind of display was all clear and they could see exactly what they have. And I, as a freelance makeup artist, everything is in those black bags that you can carry that have the drawers. And the thing with that is, even though it's great for storage and if you've got small spaces and things, things work out, you can't see what you use and things just go in and you completely forget they're there. So I've got this lovely clear storage from um, Amazon and it's coming and there's going to be a, like a desk there and it's going to be on top. And then I've got the same for um, my brushes as well because I'm getting a lot of brushes. This is one of my brushes and you can see how packed that is, guys. I need, <laughs> I need new sphere storage. So that's going to be it. It's not going to be here. This isn't going to be here. I do have a lot of plans. So yes. So that I think may need just one more coat. If you've got really good skin, um, you probably would only need one. You could probably just do a BB cream if you've got really good skin, but I tend to get um, just redness. I don't know if I'm getting rosacea. I don't think I am because it's only ever in this area. Um, but yeah, I'm going to just dampen that one more time. Sometimes when they've just been washed, they are slightly dry, but they, you know, over time, they're fine. How how long do you guys leave it to wash your brushes? I tend to do it every two weeks. Um, and I sometimes wash other brushes more so, you know, more regularly, like the foundations, the contour, the blush, um, things like that. So, okay, I think that's good. And I do think that's a match because if you look at my skin, you know, it does, it does look a little bit, you know, too pale, but actually it blends in really, really well. So that's what I'm going to do with that. Okay, so I think that's kind of looking good. And um, I've got my lights up here. I'm hoping I don't need to. I've done this quite early today in the morning. So I'm hoping that I don't have to use my lights because I like to show you guys makeup in natural lighting. Um, so... If you guys know, I wrote a book, gosh, in 2012 called An Ocean of Secrets. And I think there is a um, link or video somewhere on my channel for it. Um, but I submitted the sequel. Um, you have to submit, if you're ever doing writing, you submit. They usually ask you, can we have the first four chapters? And then they'll contact you back. Um, and I have gotten contacted back. And it was all positive for the sequel to go ahead. So this is the characters 10 years into their careers and things like that. So I just wanted to kind of, now that I have time, you know, now that I've got some time to myself, I've got my own place, you know, things are getting a little bit more calm. Um, I'm going to start kind of more writing and I kind of, sometimes I don't know about you if you're a writer, but I go into zones. So I don't, I don't sit down. I know a lot of people go, okay, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to write. I've got my pen, I've got my paper, I've got my laptop. It just, this, sometimes it will just come to me. So a whole chapter came on an overnight when the guys were in bed and everything was safe. And I think within an hour, I'd gotten maybe four or five pages. And then it, you know, went again. I popped it in my book. You know, my, um, I've got like a, I've saved a folder on my laptop and I put it in there. And then it might come in two to three weeks. And then over time, you kind of get the story. I do, it doesn't work for me to sit down and say, okay, now I'm going to, it just doesn't work for me that way. I know it works for others. It may work for others and that's great. But for me, and especially with the book, the notion of, a notion of secrets came within a year. That was including research. Um, but that's how I write, um, so I'm really excited that it got submitted um, because I always wanted a sequel and I know a lot of years have gone by since the first book, but I feel like I'm a stronger writer. I think I'm a bit more knowledgeable now and um, the, 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 the characters have grown up, so um, I feel like you know I'm in a better position and I was really, really happy um, when I got kind of the positive feedback. So yes, that's going to be probably towards the end of the year. Um, and I'll be excited about that. I'll do a video on that. 
Um, so yes, that's the foundation. Obviously, my skincare was done before I did the primer. And um, if you guys ever want to know what I do for skincare, I'll absolutely, I'll absolutely do a um, video on that. So the primer was the um, Fix and Perfect primer. Again, if there is a, a non-matte version or a dewy version, I couldn't find one. I couldn't find one anywhere. But this is good. This is really good. And um, sometimes it looks purple in the purple packaging. I saw. I do follow a lot of um, American. Um, YouTubers and influencers as well as the UK and they tend to have the purple, but it's this exact same fix and perfect um, Primer this is the five-in-one um, and it is a base and a tint um, five and one I don't see a tint there, but um, it does definitely um, Mattify your pores as well. So that's what we're going to do with that now What I want to do is go in with this guys it was two pounds on um, the Amazon website this is in 001 um, transparent um stay matte okay so we're gonna go in with that there's no smell to it and this is what it looks like it has the rimmel logo there which is quite i like that so i'm gonna go in with my powder brush and we're just gonna set in the t-zone basically this is my elf um pointed powder um for my driving guys i noticed in my last video i was trying to read for you guys one of the um I think it was one of the wording on um basically on the packaging for you guys and I could see myself in editing I was like this and when I did my driving um I got tested in the opticians first and so I do use sometimes particularly if it's darker in driving and um, I will wear my glasses but I am so I don't know I've got people and I thought I know I've got friends with glasses but I feel like my face just looks maybe I'm just super um I don't know conscious but um when i wear my glasses i don't know why i just feel conscious self-conscious but hopefully you know so basically what i did i set the t-zone area so here and here and then just a little bit on the forehead that's where i find them if i don't set it that's where the makeup starts to kind of come off after about one to two hours i do want to say with this um i get the whole day in terms of how long it lasts um, it does say 35 hour wear, but I don't know anybody who would wear that. But if you do, if you're a night worker, if you're a nurse and you don't get to go, you know, if you're doing double shifts, you know, things like that, this is definitely something to look at. So now I'm excited about this, guys. There were so many different colors in this and I wasn't sure the deepest or the lightest. This again is the 001 Sunlight and this is their bronzer. Um, they do different, I think they do a variation that there's, um, it's a square packaging, there's a highlighter blush and a bronze, um, and I think it would have come in two weeks, it wasn't on the prime delivery, but this is what it looks like. Really nice, doesn't have the logo, but it has that kind of matte effect there, and you've got some lines in there. It doesn't smell again, um, but I will say um, the eyeshadow had like a, a creamy kind of sweet smell to it, and so does the lipstick, so, but this is what it looks like, really big too. Um, so we're going to go in with my, this is the, um, I want to just make sure I've got the right, the powder brush, and this is from e.l.f. as well. Um, and I'm just going to go in, um, I might go in with my contour brush from, um, I'm just thinking just to place it. Uh, this is the contour brush from, um, guys, <laughs> it's been so... It'll come to me, it'll come to me. You probably know exactly what it is when you see it, it'll come to me. Real Techniques, there you go, okay been a, a long day already so that's what it looks like on the brush so we're just going to start off i got the lightest that i could see because they did look quite strong um let's just build that it's probably going to be a buildable one which surprises me because it looks quite dark in the pan so we're going to keep going with that okay so maybe after three you can kind of see it it's not dewy i can see that there's no dewiness to it Sometimes with powders, you can get like a dewy look to it. Oh, it's, it's definitely there. Yeah, I can certainly see it. Um, we'll blend that. We'll blend it in. That surprises me that it kind of takes a little bit more of a of effort to get kind of that depth onto your um, face. But I mean, it's workable. Definitely workable. And sometimes buildable is better because you're not putting on something so strong and then trying to hurry and blend it in before anything dries or sets. But... Yes, I do like it. I'll blend that bit out because it looks a bit harsh. But yes, so what I'll do after that is I'm just going to go back in with this. This is just the blending brush that we used with the powder. And just kind of blend that out. I like it. It's very natural. Maybe I should have got a darker one, but it did look darker in the pan. This is 001 Sunlight, so maybe it's just that kind of... 
and we'll just go back in again just kind of do a the jaw bone there and then go back in i think that's the last that'll be the last kind of um application of that that we do and i just want to look make the forehead look a little less harsh okay okay i like it it's blendable certainly and buildable so you would build that that would you definitely build that's a buildable um bronzer um and it's nice uh yeah this is the first time using this i wanted to do this all with you guys so the things that i have used before are the primer and foundation everything else we're trying together so we'll go in with that blush this is the maxi blush um this looks like it's going to be really strong i just have a feeling which isn't bad i love i'm the type of person that i used to be scared of blush um, and i used to be super kind of um careful about how much i put on but this one i really like and we're just going to do a quick swatch here you can see it's really really deep it blends out in kind of a deep a kind of a rose tinted kind of touch so we're going to go in with the real techniques blush brush have i brought that with me i have okay so we're just gonna bring that up the cheeks and that's the lightest touch there and that's, I really like that. Now, if you feel that, that you have too much on, you can always go back, always. But I, I don't like to be afraid anymore of blush. Um, I like to kind of, if I need to correct it, I will, but I like, I really like that. You just look healthy. And I think for me, a lot of the time, because of my health, I haven't been looking great. So I do like kind of, looking at kind of a nice kind of tint to the face so for me i like that but you could absolutely go deeper guys i'll do another swatch just to show you how deep that is you could go deeper what i like about this too is that it would work on deeper skin tones too so i'm crazy i want to go back in a bit more i know it's just a little bit more and i'll blend it i'll blend it up the cheekbone okay so what we're going to do is go in with the brows and you know what I didn't do? <laughs> I didn't do the concealer. <laughs> Sorry guys, we got so caught up with things. This is the Multitasker Concealer, and um, mine is in ivory, um, porcelain even, sorry. Um, and okay, what we'll do is, because I didn't really go under, as I really should have done that, guys. I'm gonna go right under so it doesn't, Effect. I should have done that first. I got too caught up. This is definitely not what I usually do, guys. <laughs> and I'm going to warm that up with one of my fingers before blending it with one of my smaller. So this is the smaller kind of that gets into the... I might actually just use that on its own. And it is damp from earlier because I had dampened it. I'll just do one more. And then just shake that off a little bit. And we're just going to point that to where I really intended for it to go. And I can't believe I did that, guys. These things happen. Um, I Okay, we're going to be super careful with that. I can't believe that, guys. I got so caught up in talking about all the products. Let's just put that on there. And... Okay, I think we've escaped that. I think we've we've fallen away with it, haven't we? So we are gonna go in with the brows. Okay. Okay, I think we I think we got there in the end. Okay. Okay, so what I want to do now is go in and try this with you guys. This is the brow micro pro micro, and then mine is in um soft brown so that's what you use this side i like the fact that it's pink and then we're just going to open the other side and come back okay so we're back so that took some doing to get it off but at least i can't say they're not security conscious in rimmel <laughs> um, it definitely took a while to get that off but that's fine and um, so soft brown and um, i like the fact that you do it's very similar to my elf brow is um, and it has got the kind of crayon effect that you twist up and it is certainly let's do this quite gently just to show you my colouring. So that's what that looks like there. It's a really good match, I think, colour match. 
So what I'm going to do is try there. So I usually, if I don't like the, the tip I, or the brush, I will go in at my own. But um, I've always used the e.l.f. so I want to give this a try as well. So we're going to go in. So yes, guys, what I am trying to do this year by the end of the year is to get a thousand subscribers because then I can put more into um, the channel. Um, I want to put more into the channel um, and it'll give me the time to put more into the channel. I can start working on maybe um, just creating more content, um, which I will be doing this year. But to get to that thousand subscribers, I will be able to then do more within YouTube itself. Um, and I will give you guys everything that I possibly can. It, I love this channel so much. Um, and it, it's what kind of I always enjoy going to. So yes, um, that's one of my, my hopes this year, by the end of the year. Um, and, you know, I've just realised, so this year, you know, I had a friend who wasn't very well, who, fingers crossed and thank God, <laughs> she's okay now. But um, it really, it kind of brought home to me how important female friends are. And just fem just having that, you know, what's inspired me is I never found somebody besides her who has had such a close relationship with their mum. Um, and I have the same with mine. My mum and me have gone through ups and downs and bads and good times. You know, nobody's perfect, but we are so close. And I've never actually seen that in somebody else. Um, and it's very inspiring, you know, and it's the first time I was able to kind of relate to a friend um, on that level. And I've never been able to relate to somebody like that before. Um, and it's really been inspiring. And I mean, it makes me want to kind of spend more time with them and kind of grow that friendship. Um, and I want friends, you know, everybody, you know, you have so many friends when you get through life, you do so many people mean so many different things. And some people go out of your life and into your life and things just happen. But it really made me focus on my female friends and putting effort into other relationships and friend friendships too, because it's kind of inspired me to try and be a better person. Um, and I think there's nothing better than giving to somebody um, and seeing how that benefits them, you know, and just being there for them. So yes, it's it's been kind of um, an experience, but it's definitely made me feel very appreciative of the people that I have. Um, for example, you know, when I shared, it wasn't the best experience for me personally. And um, I didn't feel, not that I didn't feel welcome, but I certainly didn't feel it was the, you know, this, it was definitely a short term plan and that's nothing against anybody. You know, everybody's different, you know, um, and it made me very, very determined, you know, and things that make you determined, whether they're good or bad experience are good because they do kind of get you to your next place. And I worked and worked and worked as much as I could. Um, and, you know, I've I've gotten to where I, I need to be. I do have plans to get further, but I've definitely, you know, it's made me cement my plans basically. So we're going to just try this and see what the color match is like. See what we go, how we go. Okay, slightly deeper and it has a warm tone to it. Okay, so this was medium. Okay, so there's certainly a more of a warmer tone, but that can be worked with. Feels like the same consistency as my elf, so. Okay, we might do another brush with that one. Just brush it out. Um, I've also kind of um, pushed back my driving test. So I've passed the theory. I was supposed to have my driving test on July the 12th, but my health has not been good. I don't want to go just for the sake of going. I want to go and say, okay, I'm certainly almost sure I'll pass. I, I know if I went now due to my health and everything else, I don't think I would. And I have always kind of, um, and I shouldn't, and I'm learning over time, don't kind of relate other people's lives to yours, no matter what age you are, because it takes so much time to learn that. And I'm still learning. I have days where I doubt myself and I look at somebody I know and I like wish I was there. I wish I was where they are. When I'm at the bus stop and I see people driving home and I know I have a car sitting in my, you know, in my driveway, but I can't drive it because I still have a provisional. Yes, for a moment, it makes me feel slightly down. But then I have to think to myself, Kira, you are not in a race with anybody at any point in your life. For example, I had a really hard time when all my friends started having babies and I haven't. And years ago, you know, I did have with one of my partners going back to 2012, you know, I lost 
you know, very early on, but it, it, I still lost it. So I just always knew that I, that's what I wanted. And I worked with children my whole career. And even though I'm a support worker, it's still a very caring role. Um, and I have to stop beating myself up at the, over the fact that it hasn't happened yet. Um, and so, yes, so I have good days and bad days, guys, with a lot of things. But what keeps me going is it's not over yet. Life's not over. You have to keep going for what you want. So, so that's what I kind of try to thrive in, you know, and think of every day because nobody has a perfect day every day. I don't. But nobody's promised the next day, guys. Nobody knows what tomorrow brings. Um, you know, and that includes me with the relationship with my dad. We have gone through ups and downs and he has decided he's prioritizing his life. Um, and he has always prioritized his own life. I've never really been around him for more than two weeks of my entire life. You know, and maybe a year ago that would have made me upset and cry and it would have. But what I want to say, and I am doing a video on this completely separately. Um, a parent is always a parent and a child is always a child. So if you've given your thoughts on a subject like I did and he's given his thoughts, that shouldn't mean, okay, gone. But if that person has decided because you think differently or over one subject that, oh my God, yes, and prioritized another another person, um, that's their decision. And that has no bearing on who you are as a person. And that took me so long to realize. I know now if I had a conversation with him, he wouldn't listen. He'd look at me. He wouldn't listen. And in his mind is, I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. And that could be anybody, guys. It's not just my dad. You could talk to anybody and you could see that their lines of communication are tunnel vision. They don't have anything else. They can't take anyone else's opinion other than their own or they feel like powerless. So I've learned a lot about human psychology. You know, I really have. And I can't beat myself up constantly over somebody else not wanting me or loving me. You know, because I know it happens to thousands of children all over the world men and women boys and girls you know this isn't just a female thing um but i have to kind of wake up every day and say you know what no he's not there but maybe there's a reason he's not there <laughs> you know maybe there is a reason so you know you have to just kind of and it's difficult you know you have to just realize that this has no bearing on you as a person and who you wake up at it's what it has a bearing on and the effect it is is their personality and their way of learning living you know and they have to live with that you know if i had a child that was somewhere else whether they're 10 20 30 40, you know no matter what we talked about if we had good days and bad days i'd be calling the next day and go hey you know about yesterday <laughs> let's move on from that but you know some people just aren't like that and i just you have to realize that it's not you so I do have a video on this. I won't go into it too much, but you know, it's a learning. Every day is a learning, guys. And every day you don't know what's promised in the next day. Um, and so make the most of it, you know, make the most of it. Look at yourself in the mirror in the morning without makeup and just say, yes, this is me and I'm, I'm gonna do the best I can. So that's all I can say. I'm certainly not an expert in psychology. Again, I do have a video on this because I felt it was really important to kind of talk about this. Um, so yes, so we'll go on with the other brow. Um, we will brush it first, obviously. If I do need my lights, I will. And um, there's lovely trees outside and everything. And usually in the morning it's quite bright, but sometimes when the sun goes down, it can get a little dark. So if it continues that way, we will. We will certainly. Um, put our lights on. But I wanted you to see the jet, the, the actual natural lighting, the color effect you would get. You know, you always, you shouldn't always try and do um, makeup in false lighting because it will look different outside. So it's always good to try, if you can, to do it in natural lighting. Okay, so this one is coming together a bit quicker, which is good. And I will just put my brush through and you can twist down. It's really good so you don't have to worry about it getting broken. I'm just gonna go in here. The other thing that I haven't watched that everyone I know has watched and I'm only on episode one tonight is Bridgerton. I've seen, everyone's been telling me about it. I haven't watched it. So I'm gonna watch my first episode tonight. It's like everyone couldn't believe I haven't watched one episode of Game of Thrones. I just never got it. So I, I didn't. So yes, <laughs> there we go. So tonight is Bridgerton after dinner. 
Okay, so yeah, I do like that. I don't get this effect in terms of the warmer width. Um, let's just get the lid for this. I don't, you know, my elf is a little bit cooler in terms of the color brown, but I mean, this can work. This is very, very good. This can work. So now what we're going to do is go in, guys, with this, this eyeshadow palette. Now, there was a lot of choice, but I wanted to step out of the comfort zone. Um, I think it's very, you know, unique of them to put in the blue because it just looked like you've got a purpley blend of colors. Then you got your browns, but then right in the middle, you got your blue. So yes, um, and then obviously if you are a super beginner, it does have the numbers and things at the back and you can just peel that off um, and it kind of shows you what to do. So this is Reloaded Edition um, and you get two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve colors. So I'm going to go in with my crease. I want to show you the brush. So let's go. So you get your kind of applicator brush and then you've got your soft kind of blending colors, which I think would go in, go really good when you're trying to kind of buff out your crease. Um, so we're going to go and this is what they look like. There we go. Really, really nice. So what we're going to do is just move my hair back a bit. And we're going to go in, I think, with maybe a warmer brown in the, um, and this is my buffing eye blender from e.l.f. Um, brush. And I'm going to go in with, let's have a look um, for the crease. Um, we might go in with this cooler toned brown here and I will swatch it for you. That's what that looks like here. There is a shimmer to it, a bit of a shimmer. Let's kind of do this. Okay, so what happens when you blend that out? Okay, so it's kind of a, a sandy color maybe we could say. So we're going to take that very lightly on the brush. I'm going to go light and we're just going to start with a crease and bring that in. And that comes out really dark, really cool toned brown. And that was me going really light with my brush application too. And what I think, guys, this brush is going to be really good at, this little one, is softening out the edges. Yes. Okay, so we're going to soften those edges out. What I think this would be missing is one really creamy white one because you could then use it to kind of lighten and kind of soften the other colors. So there's one here actually, this one, that we might just swatch. And that looks like it might be like a good blend. So all I'm gonna do is place that. Um, very shimmery, so this is not like a cool toned brown and what we're going to do is go in with my um elf blush brush and just blend that together and just get rid of this one here just a little bit because it's sort of the color is sticking to certain places so i'm going to go and get one of my other brushes and come back so I took it off guys because it didn't really feel quite right. The color actually came out a little bit more harsh than I expected. Um, and it doesn't mean that the color itself doesn't suit something, but I think for what I was going for, it just didn't go well. So we might go in with a warmer tone. Um, and I think I'm gonna go in with um, maybe the lighter brown here, but there is a shimmer to it. So that's interesting. What I'm thinking of doing is going in just with a really creamy color a bright color and then using the mascara because I think you would have to think about really really hard what you wanted in these and go very very lightly so you're getting good color you're getting good coverage and um, just be very wary I guess what we've just learned of is um, just where to put it so I might go in with these kind of pinkish nice tones to brighten up the corners of the eyes and inner corners and we'll go from there so I'm going to use my Nevepsku placement brush and we're just going to make sure that's cleaned off and I'm going to go in with this color to start and we're gonna go with the inner corners maybe work our way out so let's just use that and that's what it looks like on the brush so nice and bright and I'm just gonna start to I might use another actually my new real techniques placement brush so we'll use that I think I showed you guys that in the other video they were doing a really good deal on Amazon for seven pounds for three so let's just bring the brightness up and out and even start it in the corners here 
you can start to see how it just brightens that inner corner. So even if you go in with a deep gold or a deep brown, it's going to just open up the eyes. So I would say for the eyeshadows, once they're on, they stick really, really hard. It's very hard to blend them, but that just could be this palette. So if I look down, you can see how bright it's getting, but I prefer kind of having a little bit of brightness rather than, and then we're gonna go over that. I'm gonna go just, I'm not gonna go quite to the end because then I'm gonna go in with this more peachy toned. And we're gonna start with that on the corners, the outer corners and bring that in. So what I'm gonna do is change that to the placement brush. And we're just gonna get that up. So what I'll do is I'll finish that eye and come back. So that's just the eyes before the mascara is put on. Um, I like the colors and um, they're slightly drying when they go on, they're very hard to place. What I realized is I didn't use my Profusion Eye Primer, so that could be a lot to do with it. Um, I decided to go more with the creamy bright colors today just because I didn't really, I wanted to do like a plan with me, so I didn't kind of have a pre-plan. I usually have a pre-plan with the palettes, the eyeshadow palettes, and I know what colors I'm going with. And when we did learn together that maybe the cooler tones like we saw, once we put it on, um, it was very, very hard to kind of move around the the eye so for me personally I don't know if it would be a palette that I would dive into straight away and um, but I like the colors I like the fact that you have a very good range and um, I just chose personally today and um, to maybe just go with those brighter colors to make it a little bit easier for us um, and then we can go on to thrill seeker which is the mascara um, but very very good value for money and um, just really be careful maybe again it could just be that I didn't put my primer on which would have made it a little bit more silkier a bit creamier and we could have kind of blended those a bit easier but very very good value for money so I'm just going to move on now um, and this is what the packaging looks like I wanted to keep the packaging to show you guys this went viral last year um, and this is the thrill seeker extremely black from Rimmel um, so it does have a thicker um, brush and we're going to show you what it looks like. I got mine in extreme black. There was a black brown, but they didn't. It was out of stock, and that was what I was going to go for. Um, and I'm just going to use my brow um, brush because I can just see. Okay, just saw something there, guys. Right, so this is what it looks like. And I'm looking at maybe putting on my lights because it does look a little dark, but we'll go with it until we need to. So I'm just going to bring this a little closer because I tend to look to the brows when I'm looking down. So if I'm looking down through this, um, it is just because I am doing my, um, I look, I do my mascara looking down because you get a lot of what you're doing. But first of all, what I'm going to do is not forget this video and do my curls. So what I'll do, my lash curl, so what I'll do is I'll come back in a moment. Round and round any underground, you were lost, now you're found. took me a while to fix um, the brush itself is quite thick um, and it's different sizes in different places which I get a lot of companies do that um, the product was already at the tip and then um, what happened is when I took it out there was so much product attached and um, that it took me a while as you could see and um, to actually get it off the brush and then when I applied it particularly on this side it clumped my lashes together now I do have in my freelance kit you can get these um, disposable ones so I did really brush that through and I actually stopped the recording even though it'll be fast forwarded because I knew it'll take me a little bit longer just to get those kind of declumped and try and separate it all out and um, so that's the only thing and um, I may not use this again and um, it took a while I've got a lot of um, mascaras that like the collection mascara um, that is mile high that's quite good um, and it's got a fiber and um, if I just show you quickly before we move on um, 
you, and again, I have to, it took me a long time to just get all of that product off. Um, and that's what it looks like there. And I still have a lot on there. So for me, um, the color is nice. Um, I think I like better mascaras with a different shape um, on the bristle. I do like fiber mascara. Um, so I wouldn't use it again, particularly. Um, I know it was quite popular last year. Um, but for me, I think it was a lot of work um, and then just trying to brush out. But if you have time to do that and maybe, you know, you're happy with doing that, it's a very good value for money. Um, and you would get, I think the color itself is obviously quite dark. Um, but this was about three coats and I was constantly trying to kind of separate the lashes. So that's just something that's my personal opinion. I wouldn't get it again. Um, but, you know, I can see, you know, it's extreme black, thrill seeker, wonder volume. Um, so I think if you kept going in and kept kind of cleaning off your brush before you put it on, you could probably get a really good look, but I don't have that amount of time today to do that. Um, so for me, I probably wouldn't use it again. Um, but I mean, it was interesting to, to use it. So that's that. Um, I think I might go in again with some blush. Um, I have a different setting spray, my setting spray is from Revolution. Um, I for completely forgot to get a Rimmel setting spray. Um, but I think there was a lot of hits here today. Um, and then we're going to go in with the lipstick too, which is Airy Fairy, which I thought was quite nice. Um, so we're just going to go in with that blush. I just, I like it a lot. Um, we're just going to open it quickly. So yes, with that mascara, I think I would probably not get it again. I probably wouldn't use it again. It was great to try with you guys, but and I wouldn't risk putting it on the bottom lashes. I just wouldn't risk that, guys. So that's that there. I'm just kind of going to go in with both. I'm going to go back in with the bronzer too. Um, just to get a bit more of a kind of bright look. Um, and I'm going to push down the mirror and just maybe just bring it a little bit more up the cheekbone. It kind of has a highlighter effect in it as well. So just up the cheekbone slightly. Just give my, my look a little bit more depth and bring the whole thing together a bit. But yes, I think the kind of brighter eyes suit this look today. Um, and then we're just going to go in with Airy Fairy. It's lovely kind of typical packaging of Rimmel. I like it. Um, and we're just going to go in and this is what it looks like. We did do a swatch earlier. Really nice sweet scent to it. And we're just going to see what that looks like. Kind of comes off a little bit pinkish. Really moisturizing. Really, really moisturizing. really nice barely their lipstick but it definitely plumps up the lips a little bit really soft ah, i really like it guys i really really like it apologies for the nails again i could only get my appointment in next week and if you followed my video the last time and you watched it um you would see that there's a little bit of pull out there um that I did try to um, actually remove the nail varnish myself, but they did say they put something on it under the UV um, that they can only remove it. So I've got my appointment next week. So yes, um, loving the smell of the lipstick too. It's very sweet. I like that smell. Um, I'm going to show you the setting spray and then we'll be back. So this was actually um, a, I think you bought three. It was in Superdrug. Buy three Revolution products, get the matte fix for free. And um, this is the matte fix Revolution spray, setting spray, oil control. So I'm just going to give that a bit of a shake. I should have done this before the mascara. So fingers crossed this doesn't go wrong. Um, and we're just going to give a quick spray. And then just dry that up. So that stays really well too. Um, they didn't have the dewy because you had a choice but they'd run out of the dewy and I tend to get the dewy but this really works really well it doesn't dry quickly I know it says matte um, but it doesn't dry it doesn't make the skin feel tight um, and there is if you do have oily skin there's oil control in that too so they might still be doing that you buy three revolution products you get a setting spray for free um, and that's it so let's just take the hair down guys do a little bit of a brush because I know it's looking a bit crazy I'm still getting used to kind of the um hair being so short um but we're getting there with everything that's happening with my health I am finding it a lot easier to manage and cope with um so that's good 
Um, so yes, this is what the look looks like today. Um, I'm very, very pleased with it. I love Rimmel. I've always loved Rimmel. Their foundations, guys. So if I had favourites of today, um, I have probably three. So the favourites would be the Matte Rimmel Primer because even though it's matte, it definitely um, softens on the skin. It almost feels like a moisturiser. Um, and it really, really works. It really kind of helps the foundation stay. But in saying that, the foundation itself doesn't need a lot of help. So this would be my second one. Lasting finish uh, is hyaluronic acid. It has an SPF of 20, and this is their Rimmel Lasting Finished Hyaluronic Boost um, Foundation. Um, the packaging has changed. I think it's been around for a long time, but they've certainly improved the formula. Um, so that would definitely be something I would like. It also has niacinamide in it, 2%. So these two are absolutely, if you get anything, guys, my, my recommendation would be these two. And then the other thing that I really liked was the um, maxi blushes. Um, so this is what they look like. They had several different colors. This was the one that this is in wild card, 003. Um, and the only thing I would say with the bronzer, it was really, really good, but um, just took a bit of, I think it's really good and I just got the wrong color. A little bit of build up it needed, but that's not always a bad thing. Um, when you have a bronzer or something quite deep, having to kind of work with it and um, sometimes you get more control of what you're doing whereas if it's really really strong and you go in with your bronzer brush or whatever brush you use um, and it's so dark you're really you're kind of struggling and panicking to try and move it around the face so yes so that would be my my top three I guess and uh, top four even um, things that I didn't really like and um, that I wouldn't buy or use again um, and I know it was viral and maybe it's just me guys but um, I wouldn't buy or use the Thrill Seeker again I just found a couple of reasons and um, one the brush I think the shape was a really good idea but the consistency of the mascara it clumped a lot so even if you I, I don't know if you saw when you were looking at it and you may have noticed that I spent some time just cleaning it off the brush before I actually applied it and even at that particularly with this eye it clumped the lashes together so I always have my freelance tech you know these um disposable brushes I hope I haven't put it somewhere I may have the disposable ones and I really separated that and used that with that so yes, so um, but all in all, guys, Rimmel is an amazing, amazing um brand. Really, really good for um, you know, if you're trying to put money into something else or you're saving money. Um, and the thing I just wanted to mention was this um color is really good payoff, but you know, it may have been that I just forgot my primer, um, that we really found it hard to kind of move that brown around the face and um, what are the eyes when I was trying to blend. So the placement went really well. But as you saw, the minute I tried to kind of blend it out in any way, it really stuck. And that could just be that I didn't have my eye primer on and saying that the colors are really beautiful and we use them I wiped that off and used the kind of brighter creamier colors and they worked really well so yes I think this was a really really good haul and um, you always find up and down things the other thing I had along for a long time anyway and um, that I added in this anyway some of these I got purposely for the the um so the three things that I had already was the um, concealer, primer and foundation. I've had those for a while um, and I know they're very, very, um, for me, they're very popular in my kit and my personal makeup because they're just so reliable. And what I forgot to kind of mention, obviously I had to panic and put it back on because I forgot, um, was the um, multitasker. So yes, very, very good. Um, I like this and the e.l.f. Um, conceal, um, but um, yeah, this is almost up there with e.l.f as well so yes that's it guys again stay matte um translucent is always really good too um it always keeps it really does really good job of setting everything so yes and then you could choose a different lipstick i do have a lot of reds at the minute so i wanted to try maybe the pinkish tones and i thought that really went well with the blush as well so this is the video guys thank you for watching again thank you for all the subscribers if you like this video do subscribe um, and follow my videos i have two to three videos a week if i don't have one on a saturday i always have one to two on a monday or a wednesday and um, i do try my best to get them in on saturdays too depending on work and how i'm feeling and things something like that always happens guys doesn't it um so yes have a great day guys and i'll see you very soon